this is the second video on physiological changes in a pregnancy and this video I'm going to talk about respiratory system effect of pregnancy okay I'm going to talk about the mechanical effect of enlarging uterus on the respiratory system about the total body O2 consumption effect about dyspnea in pregnancy okay what is the mechanical effect of enlarging uterus in a pregnancy the enlarging uterus in a pregnancy will raise the diaphragm up about 4 cm above its usual resting position okay and as a result of that we will have less negative intrathoracic pressure because the it will be less distant in the thora, uh, in the thorax for negative pressure okay so we have less negative intrathoracic pressure we will have less residual volume due to the same cause of course okay what is residual volume it is the volume of air trapped in lung after full expiration so after you fully expire the air in in your lung some of air stays there okay and this is the residual volume in pregnancy due to the mass effect of the diaphragm okay on the lung there will be less residual volume and there will be less expiratory reserve volume okay less expiratory reserve volume both expiratory reserve volume and residual volume constitute what uh, what we call functional residual capacity f R C functional residual capacity is the addition of residual volume to expiratory reserve volume so we knew that residual volume and expiratory reserve volume will what will decrease okay so decreasing of these two will decrease the functional residual volume okay functional residual volume uh, sorry functional residual volume definition of functional residual capacity definition is the volume of air in lung at the end of pass passive expiration okay at the end of passive expiration so it will decrease so it's right that we have a diaphragm that will raise up during pregnancy but though we have no change in muscle power the respiratory muscle power will stay as it okay so we have no change in muscle power and because we have no change in muscle power we have no change in vital capacity what is vital capacity is the maximum volume can be forcibly inspired after maximum expiration so after a maximum expiration the maximum volume that you can forcibly inspire is the vital capacity and this vital capacity depend on your muscle tone okay on your ability to inspire air if you have no change in muscle tone then you will have no change in muscle capacity and this is like a pneumoperitoneum in pneumoperitoneum we have a decrease in functional rate capacity because of pressure effect again and decrease in the residual volume and expiratory reserve volume so we have decrease in functional residual capacity with no effect on vital capacity okay we have no effect on vital capacity just like in pregnancy okay so pneumoperitoneum has a, a similar effect to pregnancy on respiratory system uh, okay but in cases like in obesity for example severe obesity we have an effect on the expiratory muscle okay so it is not, not exactly like mechanical effect of pregnancy because we have a decrease in functional residual capacity and a change in vital capacity okay this is about the mechanical effect of enlarging uterus what about the total body o2 consumption in a pregnancy 
the total body auto consumption in a pregnancy will increase and this is due to mostly uterus and its contents consumption of the oxygen in the previous video I told you about that about 1200 ml per minute of blood flow is to uterus okay in pregnancy so that a huge amount of blood will consume a lot of oxygen so about 50% of oxygen consumption in pregnancy is in uterus and its content the rest of blood consum consumption is in renal, cardiac, breast and other tissues okay so the overall result that we have increased in a, a body O2 consumption of about 15 to 20 percent okay the result of increased oxygen consumption is a load of carbon dioxide CO2 as a byproduct because you know oxygen com consumption uh, will uh, produce a lot of CO2 as a byproduct okay progesterone effect in pregnancy is hypersensitivity of chemoreceptors to CO2 okay so progesterone in pregnancy normally increase okay and we have increasing in CO2 okay due to a lot of oxygen consumption so the end result is hypersensitivity of chemoreceptors to the increasing CO2 okay so as a compensation of increased CO2 as a, a compensation we have increase in cardiac output and increase in ventilation per minute so the body or the respiratory system it tries to hyperventilate to get rid of the overproduction of CO2 and also we have increase in CO2 in cardiac output I'm sorry okay so increase in ventilation per minute depends on two factors okay hyperventilation depends on two factors the tidal volume and the respiratory rate what tidal volume is it is respiratory volume of air inspired and expired at each breath so each breath we inspire and expire air. the volume of air that inspired and expired is the tidal volume okay this is the first factor that affect the ventilation uh, the ventilation okay the second thing is the respiratory rate okay respiratory rate the frequency of respiration so in cases of pregnancy we have no change in the respiratory rate okay but the tidal volume will increase the tidal volume or the depth of a breathing will increase but not the frequency okay not the rate but the depth of uh, of the of uh, breathing so that increase of uh, tidal volume or the volume of air inspired and expired at each breath or the depth of breathing by 40 uh, percent will increase ventilation per minute also by or about 40 percent okay so this to com compensatory mechanism the increased cardiac output and increased ventilation will get rid of uh, carbon dioxide not to normal uh, levels even it will decrease uh, the uh, the co2 to a levels that are below normal levels okay okay 27 to 32 uh, millimercury 27 to 32 millimeter, uh, millimeter mercury okay and that will lead to increase in uh, co2 in a gradient between the mom and the fetus okay so fetus blood will have more co2 than maternal blood and that will lead to co2 diffusion from the baby to the mother 
and O2 diffusion from the mother to the baby. This is the first thing to happen. The second thing is respiratory alkalosis, okay? So when we have less CO2, we will have alkalosis, and that alkalosis is due to hyperventilation. So we have respiratory alkalosis that will <coughs> move the pH from to, toward the alkalization from 7.4 to 7.45, and there is some variability in that numbers. Okay, that respiratory alkalosis will be compensated by bicarbonate excretion in the urine. So bicarbonate is an, an a, is a base, okay, and excretion of bicarbonate in the urine will alkalize in, uh, in the urine, but will acidize the blood. So it is a, com a compensatory mechanism to, uh, to get rid of respiratory alkalosis. The third effect of the decrease in CO2 is corresponding increase in O2, okay? So O2 will increase, O2 concentration will increase in the blood to about 106 to 108 millimeter mercury, okay? So this is due to decrease CO2. And that, uh, after that, a slight in, a downward will happen to uh, O2 as pregnancy proceeds. So the increase in O2 is just an early pregnancy. And after that, it will slightly decrease as the pregnancy proceeds. So these are the three effects of CO2 fall during pregnancy due to compensation of a lot of CO2 uh, uh, due to increase in total oxygen consumption. Okay, the compensation is by increased cardiac output and ventilation per minute. Okay, the increase in ventilation per minute is not by increasing frequency or heart rate. Oh, I'm sorry, respiratory rate, but increase in depth of breathing or the tidal volume. Now let's move to the last point, the respiratory system, physiological change of pregnancy, dyspnea and pregnancy. 60 to 70 percent of pregnant ladies will uh, suffer from dyspnea, okay? And the exact cause is not uh, well known, okay, until now. But some uh, says uh, that un the unknown etiology may be due to hypersensitivity to CO2 and decreased CO2 response okay and decrease co2 uh, response so it's not very important the important thing that 60 70 percent of pregnant ladies will have dyspnea in a pregnancy okay thank you very much see you in the next video talking about other physiological changes in pregnancy